The Americans with Disabilities Act cleared the way for more people with disabilities to enter the workforce. But there are no national statistics on what they experience at work. Now a new survey of the obstacles they've overcome and the barriers they still face looks at attitudes employers hold, the accommodations they seek, and surprisingly, the government programs intended to help them that actually are a disincentive to their entering the workforce. The 2015 National Employment and Disability Survey has been released by the Kessler Foundation. Its president and chief executive officer is Roger DeRose. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. What are the most common barriers people with disabilities face in the workplace? Well, you know, Mary Ellis, there, there are so many different types of myths that exist for people with disabilities in the workplace that the, the largest issues that they face are typically uh, lack of training and education to be relevant for the job that they're going into. So that's an important issue for them to overcome. Another issue is transportation issues for people with disabilities. And a, a third and probably the most important that they face is attitudes from people with disabilities, both from a supervisory point of view, in terms of uh, supervisors not thinking that they could do the job, as well as coworkers thinking the same thing. The data is broken into categories of faced and overcome. What's the distinction? Well, uh, facing uh, an obstacle uh, going into the job itself might be such as transportation or attitudes or pay, uh, and overcoming them is how they've actually uh, addressed those issues in the workplace, in the environment that they're in, or actually have moved out of that environment into a new environment to overcome the obstacle. And how, how does this research help? Well, I, I believe that what, what it will help us do is it will help us frame uh, how we spend our money, how we invest our funds as an organization, as a grant maker, as a, a funder of many of these types of programs, so that we're targeting the major issues that people face, number one. I think secondly, it may influence other grant makers that may not be funding disabilities right now, but recognize that if they're in the job poverty economic development area, that with 20% of the American population having some form of a disability that, and recognizing that people with disabilities oftentimes live in poverty, that this may be an issue that they may want to fund as well. And then finally, I'm hopeful that uh, our politicians will take some of the information that we've gathered in this survey that's very relevant and statistically valid and use that as a way to address some of the public policy issues that uh, we now have with the public, pol pol public benefits that we provide to people with disabilities. And what are those resources that you provide? Well, we provide resources in the, in, from the perspective of funding. We fund other nonprofits that have a skill set to help for-profit companies hire and find people with disabilities and then train uh, their workforce and how to deal with people with disabilities in the workforce. And, and the, the issue that we try to address is that we do not want to create sheltered workshops for people with disabilities where it's just people with disabilities. We want to have them working side by side with able-bodied individuals for the same pay, being held accountable for the same metrics, and, 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 and then demonstrating that they can actually do the work. Roger DeRose, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you.